Hello and welcome to what I am hoping will be a series of videos that document my Silent Hunter 3 campaign that I'm just getting back into uh, after a uh, bit of a bit of a hiatus uh, and so I thought I'd not that there isn't a shortage of Silent Hunter videos already available online I thought that uh, I would document mine for myself and for anyone who was interested and even though there is a wide range of instructional videos on this game out there in terms of tactics and and how to play the game uh, I, there's always room for one more I suppose because everyone has a slightly different way of playing and what I've taken from all of the many excellent videos that are available online I've realized that uh, even though there's more and more being produced and there's there's always different ways that people play and there's different things that you can learn uh, so I've created a new profile <coughs> Schutzer and this is his name and uh, which is mine and uh, and so we're starting off in 1939. I've had lo I've loaded up the the Wolves of Steel Mega Mod or Super Mod uh, version 2.2.20, uh, which is really the highly recommended mod, which takes care of a lot of things. Uh, other mods can be added on, but the, the 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 chaps who've made the mod, I think they recommend not to. Various conflicts mods in my meager experience often are difficult at the best of times because <laughs> uh, they can often crash the game. The only other mod that I've installed is the uh, the Grossdeutsche Rundfunk, the radio uh, from the propaganda radio of the Third Reich, uh, which is played uh, on the radio in the boat, which is has speeches and music. So we'll get along with it. Uh, this is the first one. I've selected realistic difficulty, but I will change one little thing in there once we get started. So we hit the start and then we come up with the load screen. Now the advice is to the first thing to do is to save the game once we're in the pen. So here we are in the pen. First thing we need to do is save the game U-Boat Pen. We'll just call it that. Save. Now, we then load the very same. So apparently this is necessary to start the campaign properly. And in fact, if you don't do this, then I think you can't access the upgrades uh, chap. So, first thing we do is that. The second thing that I'm going to do before we do anything else is I'm going to change the options. So it's realistic setting. The only thing I'm going to change is just because I want the eye candy is to remove the no external view option. So everything else I'm keeping the same. The only thing I'm changing is this one because I might want to take some external uh, screenshots as I go. Sound settings, we'll check that. Master volume, sound effects volume, so on and so forth. That all looks good. Graphics settings, high. That's fine. Yes. Resume game. Okay, so the first thing we do is we're going to go over here. And we're going to check Captain for upgrades. Nine. And so, Conning Tower, we're going to stick with the standard uh, Type 7B Conning Tower. We're starting off in a Type 7B boat. Deck gun, we already have a deck gun in place in the current position, so that's good. Sensors, our current sensor is the GHG. Now, what we might do is we might upgrade plus the rotating retractable set. So this will increase from a range of 140 degrees on each side 
to a coverage of full 360 degrees. So we're going to equip ourselves with that. That costs 500. It's brought our renown down to 1500. So that's fine. There's no radar warning receiver, no decoy launcher. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm not going to worry about a paint scheme. That costs 1500. I'm not worrying about that at the moment. I am going to change the emblem. So the boat that I'm going to be taking today is U87, which is this one here because I quite like the Talon. Made five war patrols with the 5th Flotilla. She sunk five ships for a total of 38,000 uh, gross registered tons. So that's going to be my minimum um, as a goal. She was sunk with all hands on the 4th of March west of Lexios in position, such and such. Depth charges from the Canadian Corvette. Cost is zero, so we'll take that. We could go a paint scheme, but I'm not going to do that. If we get some good renown in this next uh, patrol, then we might lash out and get some camouflage. Now, the one last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change my torpedo loadout. So, thank you to Stostrup, uh, Matt, for giving me the advice on the historical loadout for the Type 7. So the Type 7, when she went out, would have 9 Etos and 9 Atos. Now, the Etos are the electrics. These ones here, the electric torpedoes, which did not have a wake behind them. However, they only had one speed setting, and that was 28 knots. The G7A, which was the earlier type, was gas steam driven. You could set them to three different speeds, so they'd have three different ranges as a consequence. The lower the speed, the longer the range. Drawback is that they produced bubbles, which were uh, able to be spotted. However, all of the loaded tubes were Etos. So, we take, see if we can pop an Ito in there, an Ito in there, an Ito in there. Aft tube, Ito. Now when it came to the reserves, the bow storage, we have six available. There were two Atos and four Etos. Two, three, four. And in the other uh, externals, they were Atos. So what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Etos. One, two, three, four, five Atos. So Ato and Ito. A, E, E torpedo, A torpedo. So we have a historical loadout here for what they would have gone out with. So that's good. We should all be set. Excellent. Now, the next thing we do is we go across and we observe and listen to the situation zurück, Herr So we'll run through this. Kommen Sie herein, Herr Kalon. Ich habe soeben neue Befehle vom OKM erhalten. Unsere Situation hat sich leider zum Schlechten gewendet. Sehen Sie. Nach unserer Invasion Polens haben uns England und Frankreich den Krieg erklärt. Damit hat Berlin nicht gerechnet. Und das bedeutet, dass wir der mächtigsten Flotte der Welt gegenüberstehen. Der Royal Navy. Ein ungleiches Duell, wenn man überhaupt von Duell sprechen kann. Die englische Flotte zählt 255 Kriegsschiffe, unsere bloß 34. Das heißt, wir haben nur eine einzige Hoffnung, unsere U-Boote. Unsere Feinde zwingen unsere Schlachtschiffe mit einer Seeblockade dazu, im Hafen zu bleiben oder die direkte Konfrontation zu suchen. Eine Situation, die wir uns derzeit keinesfalls leisten können. 
Nur mit kleineren Einheiten wie unseren U-Booten können wir die Blockade umgehen und auf die offene See durchbrechen. Wir haben zurzeit 46 U-Boote. Davon sind 22 gefechtsbereit. Sie werden eines davon übernehmen. Machen Sie das Beste daraus. Unser strategisches Gesamtziel, wie Kommodore Dönitz es bereits erläutert hat, besteht darin, Englands Abhängigkeit von importierten Gütern auszunutzen, indem wir ohne direkte Konfrontation zuschlagen, alle Nachschublinien kappen und die Einwohner aushungern, bis der König... Per Ihr vorläufiges Ziel besteht darin, die wichtigsten Nachschublinien entlang der englischen Küste anzugreifen und größtmöglichen Schaden anzurichten. Konzentrieren Sie Ihre Angriffe in erster Linie auf ungeschützte Geleitzüge und Frachter. Damit durchtrennen wir die Nachschubadern des Feinds, bremsen die Produktion seiner Werften aus und reduzieren so seinen gesamten Schiffsraum. Schicken wir die Tommys zur Hölle, ohne dass er eine Ahnung haben. Gute Jagd, Herr Kommandant. Okay, so that's the situation. Uh, that's largely what we need to do when we're off uh, fighting the Tommies. But for now, our theater of operations is over here in the Ostsee. So this is the single mission that's essentially available to us now. We don't have any o available to us over there. So we request the mission, and that is to intercept report the Polish task force in this area of operation. We will be leaving from the base port of Memel. The date is August 31, 1939. So now with that selected, we start the patrol. Now I think I've got everything. I've probably forgotten something. I always forget to Kurs wie nach beiden Dieselmaschinen. Maschinenschiff in Sicht. Kurs 7, 2. Bereit machen zum Kurswechsel. Right, welcome to U87. Ja, halbe Fahrt voraus. Maschinen stopp. Erreichen das Ende der Wegenschalke. So this concludes the first video. The second video, I will be taking you through the boat. Laufen auf beiden Dieselmaschinen. Fahrt bei dem Wetter 1, 4. U-Boot gesichtet. Kurs 2, 6 through the boat and uh, getting us underway.